Conservation resources are limited, more so for amphibians than many other taxa. And with over 2,000 threatened species in need of help, the conservation needs assessment process seeks to objectively and consistently identify priority species and their immediate conservation needs. Welcome, my name is Danny, and in this series of short tutorials, I'll be introducing you to amphibian conservation needs assessments. And I'll show you how to view, add, and edit assessments using the online assessment program. The conservation needs assessment process was initially developed in 2006 by a group of field biologists and researchers, captive breeding experts and population biologists, and was subsequently expanded in 2009 to a logical, repeatable, and most importantly, transparent procedure for guiding both in situ and ex situ amphibian conservation activities within a country or region. Since 2007, assessments have been completed for over 3,000 amphibian species, that's almost half of the currently known species, in 26 different countries or regions. Most often, these assessments have been carried out in national workshops with up to 20 participants present. The cost of holding these workshops, including all the participants and facilitators' transport, accommodations, and food costs, have been covered by grants from a wide range of funding organizations. With conservation funding becoming more difficult to obtain in recent years, a new online conservation needs assessment program was developed in 2015, and assessments can now be undertaken online as well as in a workshop situation. Development of the online assessment program was generously supported by the European Association of Zoos and Aquaria, the Zoo and Aquarium Association, and the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. The captive conservation community, including zoos and aquariums, has a vested interest in the recommendations generated by conservation needs assessments to help with their regional collection planning efforts, not only within their own regions, but within the additional regions which are the focus of their support for both in situ and ex situ programs. The recommendations also include prioritized actions to help save species in the wild, including which species and populations require additional types of field research, measures that could be taken to prevent further declines by mitigating threats in the wild, as well as prioritizing species for biobanking activities. When considered at the national level, all of the recommendations provide an incredibly useful guide for the development or updating of national amphibian conservation action plans. Most often, National IUCN Amphibian Specialist Group, or ASG chairs, will help to coordinate the assessment of all amphibian species in their country over a relatively short time period, with the subsequent assessments and recommendations for conservation actions being used as the basis for the development of a national amphibian action plan. Scientists, field biologists and researchers, animal husbandry experts and others are vital to the success of the conservation needs assessments. Sharing expertise and experiences enhances the assessments, ensuring that appropriate recommendations for national and global conservation actions are delivered where they are most needed. A complete conservation needs assessment for each species includes current information on the status of the species in the wild, suitable habitat, the threats facing each species, cultural, scientific, socioeconomic, and phylogenetic significance, and past ex situ experience with the species, as well as information about potential authorization for any proposed ex situ conservation programs and the availability of founder animals, should captive programs be recommended. Some of this information is best provided by field biologists and researchers, and some will be provided by people with relevant experience or knowledge of past ex situ amphibian conservation programs. The assessments then automatically generate prioritized recommendations for each species for one or more conservation actions. These recommendations are then used as a planning guide for both in situ and ex situ amphibian conservationists. The benefits of this assessment process are clear. We assemble the leading amphibian field experts in each region to collectively determine the best course of conservation actions to help prevent the extinctions of threatened amphibian species in the wild. These actions include habitat restoration and preservation, threat mitigation, captive breeding for release, and community awareness and involvement. You would almost certainly be familiar with the IUCN Red List assessments, which are used for a variety of things, including as a basis for monitoring the trends in species populations 
and to develop plans for conservation action. For many species, particularly amphibians, the conservation action section of the Red List assessment process currently falls short of providing conservationists with reliable guidance for mitigating existing threats in the wild and for implementing appropriate in situ and ex situ activities to reduce the level of threat and the risk of possible extinction. In many assessments, this section has not been completed. The Red List assessment process is a significant step in setting priorities for conservation action, but does not currently provide any consistent and objective direction for immediate and future conservation actions. Utilizing the data from both the Red List assessment and the conservation needs assessments results in a far more holistic method for assessing priorities for conservation action, which include other factors that are not currently being considered within the framework of the Red List assessment process. The two different assessments complement each other and result in a far more productive assessment for each species, providing future conservation directions, including actions that can and should be implemented to reduce the threats facing each species. Many conservation need assessments to date have shown that for some of the most threatened species, it is unlikely that the threats they face in the wild can be mitigated in time to prevent their extinction. This has been most obvious in Panama, where a number of species are presumed to have gone extinct in the wild within the last 10 to 20 years as a result of mortality due to chytrid fungus. The amphibian arc's role in amphibian conservation is to help coordinate the captive component of the Amphibian Conservation Action Plan. Without immediate captive management as a stopgap component of an integrated conservation effort, hundreds of species could become extinct. Because ex situ resources are limited, the amphibian arc must try to identify which species require ex situ management most urgently, and the conservation needs assessment process helps us all to determine those priorities. The conservation needs assessment process has been an evolving protocol. The criteria and their rankings have been adjusted as experience with the process was gained, and we continue to work with the broader conservation community to identify goals, threats, and conservation options. Assessments and prioritization of individual species are reviewed and updated as we gain knowledge and as the threats to each species change. Thus, there will be a need to constantly assess species status and monitor threats so that emerging critical situations are responded to sufficiently quickly. In the next tutorial video for the conservation needs assessments, I'll give you a more in-depth look at how the online assessment program works, including adding new assessments and viewing existing assessments and species recommendations.